Hi everyone, and welcome to another edition of Science Boom. My name is Mike Doig, and in today's episode, we're going to be talking about chemical weathering. Two types of weathering exist. Mechanical weathering, which involves the breakdown of rocks and soils through contact with things such as heat, water, ice, and pressure. And the second type of weathering, which we're going to focus on today, chemical weathering which involves the direct effect of chemicals or biologically produced chemicals in the breakdown of rocks and minerals. Behind me, I have Cleopatra's Needle. Cleopatra's Needles are a trio of obelisks in London, Paris, and New York City. Each is made of red granite and stand about 68 feet high, weighing about 180 tons each. On their sides, they're inscribed with Egyptian hieroglyphics. They were originally erected in the Egyptian city of Heliopolis around 1450 BC. The inscriptions were added about 200 years later by Ramses II. The obelisks were moved to Alexandria and set up in the Caesarium, a temple built by Cleopatra in honor of Mark Antony by the Romans, in 12 BC during the reign of Augustus. But they were knocked down sometime later, and they were covered with sand, which had the fortuitous effect of preventing the hieroglyphics from experiencing the effects of weathering. Cleopatra's needles existed in Egypt for almost 3,100 years with their hieroglyphics, in only 129 years in New York City, they've become almost completely smooth due to the effects of chemical weathering. All of the rain and harsh winters here in this climate have taken their toll on this ancient artifact. We are back here in the lab and um, what we're going to do now is we're actually going to model the chemical weathering that we saw at Cleopatra's Needle. I'm going to show you guys how to do this with your students so that you can see the effects of chemical weathering on some very simple objects. So let's get started. All right, so what you're gonna need for this experiment is a piece of chalk, a paper clip, or something sharp that you can scratch the chalk with, eyedropper, uh, some vinegar, and a container. I'm using a beaker, you can use something as simple as a cup. Now, what you're gonna have the students do is create their very own Cleopatra's needle. Um, if you give them a piece of chalk, you can have them carve either their initials or some sort of meaningful um, characters into the chalk. So I'm going to put S, B into it and try and make sure that they do it nice and deep, you know, not too, uh, too hard to break the chalk, but enough to actually leave a mark on it. I don't know if you can see that. I put some, some scratches into the chalk. Then we place this inside of this beaker here. Once again, you can use a cup, and we're going to use a few drops of vinegar to um, get this reaction started. And what we're going to start to see are the effects of chemical weathering. What we just saw between the chalk and the vinegar is something called a carbonation reaction. There's calcium carbonate inside the chalk, and the vinegar is slightly acidic. When you mix the two, you end up with bubbles and a gas being released, carbon dioxide specifically. We see a very similar type of thing happen at Cleopatra's Needle. The obelisk itself is made up of a type of rock that interacts with acid precipitation. Now, acid precipitation, many people think that it's, that it's you know, if you get acid rain on you, it's going to melt your skin away. It's just slightly acidic, and over time, it begins to wear away and dissolve the rock. It carries the rock away. Just like you saw at the bottom of the beaker, there was a little bit of white material that was the chalk being carried away by the vinegar. The rock at Cleopatra's Needle gets dissolved and carried away. Thanks for watching, and hopefully you have a better understanding of chemical weathering. You have a great activity to do with your students, and hopefully you can make it out to Central Park and see Cleopatra's Needle. Till next time, I'm Mike Doig for Science Boom. Subscribe to scienceboom.com today so you can claim your free copy of 101 Science Misconceptions.